Hello, I'm Bill Blaine, market strategist at Shard Capital, normally based in London, but like everyone else, working from home during lockdown. The Chinese philosopher general Sun Tzu famously observed, in the midst of chaos, there is also opportunity. Now, the Chinese pay very close attention to these maxims. China's plan to issue a multi-tranche, euro-denominated jumbo bond aimed at European investors this week is absolutely brilliant timing in the midst of chaos. It's so brilliant it might go down as one of the most cynical market timing moments in recent bond market history. And that's because as the US economy goes into a second tumble, lockdowns are imposed, the pandemic infections are exploding across the states, and the new cold civil war in the US intensifies, with increasing concerns on what, about what further damage Trump might do from his White House bunker, suddenly up pop the Chinese offering a nice plump opportunity to invest in a growth economy coping well with the virus. On a strict sovereign investment basis, well, what's not to like about a positive yielding China debt deal at, say, 0.1% when Italy five-year debt is 0%? I reckon the new Chinese deal will find a very responsive investor base in Europe. And the reason for that is America just doesn't seem to understand the damage the current ongoing US election drama is doing to global perceptions of the USA. Across Europe, investors are staring in open mouth horror at the deep divisions, the polarization and the denial of the democratic process the recent US election has revealed. They see very clear parallels to Europe's tortured 1930s when they hear otherwise sane and rational Republicans turning logic on its head and declaring Biden has to prove he won the election and there wasn't fraud, which is something I heard on the BBC's Panorama programme last night. Yesterday I was on a call with a major French fund and they were shocked at how quickly the US appears to be unravelling, and they admit it's a struggle to put a compelling investment narrative around US growth, stocks and outcomes in the current uncertain situation. Sure, the US will recover from the pandemic when vaccines comes, but what sort of recovery can a divided nation make? The world has absolutely changed. Investment narratives are swinging away from the old towards the new, and the Chinese are at the forefront of riding that new curve higher. Trump is fiddling while coronavirus burns down his country. The Chinese will be out there offering attractively priced debt and using their deal as a window from which to build in their charm offensive towards Western investors. Their decision to tap European investors, which followed a first deal last year, is a clear signal to Washington that they no longer regard the greenback as the global first currency. It's a sign of favour towards the Europe. It's going to be divisive. And it comes at a time as investors around the globe are looking at China as a market to pivot towards. Just read the stream of consciousness that Ray Dalio of Bridgewater has been putting out on why to invest in China in recent weeks. Now, I'm slightly more cautious about China than Ray Dalio. If I had to choose between the US and China, it would be a difficult call. In the US, there is information overload. Sometimes you know just too much about companies and too much about what's going on, and the rule of the courts is sacrosanct. In China, I'd be questioning just how far we should dive into an economy we don't really fully understand, where the data is debatable and the legal path to decisions can be trumped at the highest levels and apparent personal whims of the party chairman. That said, I recently did put a large part of my current CASP position on my PA accounts into increased China allocations, but rather than going all in, I'm sticking to 5% for the time being. The China deal team that will be out digitally roadshowing this new bond deal are going to be very well prepared to answer investor questions, such as the sudden decision to shut down the Ant Financial IPO two weeks ago. They will be framing it as sound regulation to put in place a complex 
um, set of regulations on shadow banking and to put in place new cat capitalization rules. They'll also be explaining that the clampdown on Chinese tech firms that's been recently announced is to end monopolistic practices and make the digitized economy more effective. Uh, these are both things that have hit my new positions in Tencent and Alibaba, but easy come, easy go. The China deal team that's out there, though, they might struggle a little bit as they try to explain just how complex the banking and shadow banking systems are in China and what the risks are. They are clearly increasing. They're more likely to get quite annoyed when they're asked by investors about their cat-handed approach to democracy in Hong Kong and issues like the, treat, uh, the treatment of the Uyghur minority. And they will bristle as they explain that these are domestic policy matters. The Chinese do tend to struggle if you directly question and criticize them, which is why they come off badly in negotiations and initiatives like the Belt and Road trade links, which are now struggling and aren't finding widespread adoption. However, concerns about what China is doing and how unfair China looks in some of its domestic issues need to be put against what we're seeing happening in alternative markets, the US being the main one. As I said, the world is clearly changing. And if China comes in and offers a very attractive bond coupon, why upset them now? Maybe this is the time to be changing. Anyway, thanks very much. I look forward to speaking to you again next week.